Heat retention cooking is a way of cooking without having the stove turned on the entire time. Many recipes ask you to bring something to a boil, then cover it and let it simmer for a while with the stove turned on low. What's really happening is that while it's sitting on the stove, heat is being lost from the pot to the surrounding air. The reason for having the stove turned on is to replace that lost heat. So instead, turn off the stove and do what you always do to keep the heat in. Bundle up. Or in more technical terms, surround the pot with insulation. I'll give you an example by showing you how I cook long grain brown rice for one or two people. The usual way to cook long grain brown rice is to bring rice and water to a boil, then to cover and let simmer for 45 minutes. The heat retention cooking way is still to bring it to a boil, but then to cover it and let simmer for only 10 minutes. Then turn off the stove and move the pot to a well insulated container. Leave it there for 50 minutes. After that, it's ready to eat. Here it is, step by step. First, measure out one quarter cup of rice and put it in the pot. Followed by one and three quarter cups of water. Next, put it on the stove and turn the stove to high to bring the water to a boil. Once the water is boiling, cover the pot and turn the stove down to low and let it simmer for only 10 minutes. While that's happening, get the insulated container ready. Mine is simply a large plastic bowl which I sometimes use for washing things in. For the insulation, I put a thick beach towel in the bottom and on top of that I put another smaller towel. Then I add a heavy blanket. Make sure when you put it all together that you leave plenty of material hanging over the edges since you'll need this to wrap around the top of the pot. The thicker the insulation you use, the better this works. When the 10 minutes of simmering are up, turn off the stove, remove the pot, and put it in the insulated container. Make sure it's nice and snug all around and wrap plenty up over the top too. Don't leave any places where air can easily get in or out. Leave it like that for 50 minutes. After the 50 minutes are up, unwrap it all and you'll find that your rice is nice and fluffy. If it's not hot enough, you can add a little water and bring it to a boil briefly to heat it up a bit before eating it. The insulation that you use, towels and blankets in my case, is very important. Let me go over some basic and principles of insulation. Insulation separates the hot side from the cold side. Its purpose is to slow down the movement of the heat from the hot side to the cold side. A good insulation is something that has lots of air pockets inside it. Some examples are hay, wool, cotton, crumpled or shredded paper, and of course thick blankets and towels. It's the air pockets and the material surrounding them that slow down the movement of the heat. The thicker the insulation between the hot and cold sides, the longer the heat will take to move to the cold side. The best insulation is nothing at all, literally. That means a vacuum. Thermal cookers make use of this. With a thermal cooker, first you cook your food in a metal pot. Then you put the metal pot inside a container that has vacuum inside its walls, like with a the thermos. The vacuum acts just like insulation slowing heat loss. Thermal cookers are used in Asia and can usually be found in stores that sell Asian cookware. Food that's left for a few hours at between 41 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 Celsius to 60 Celsius can allow bacteria to grow. That's why it's a good idea to let your rice simmer for 10 minutes on the stove before moving it to the insulated container. Alternatively, you can bring your food to a boil again after it's done cooking in the insulated container. I usually put the pot back on the stove, add a little more water and some kidney beans, black beans or chickpeas and boil it all at the same time for a minute. So I use both methods. A small set of examples of things to cook this way are rice, potatoes, carrots, beans, soup and so on. There's another reason why you might let your food simmer on the stove before moving it to the insulated container. 
Before putting it in the insulated container, you want to make sure that the heat has gotten all the way into the food. If your food is rice, then it won't take long for the heat to get all the way into it. But if your food is carrot slices, then it'll take more time. The time you'll need to leave your food in the insulated container varies a lot depending on how thick your insulation is and what you're cooking and how much you're cooking. I found that 50 minutes works for my single serving of long grain brown rice by trying it a few times. It can easily take twice as long to cook as normal. Don't be afraid to experiment.